And so this meeting is now, I believe, being recorded. Yes, this meeting is now being recorded. Uh, uh, welcome, everybody. We have not met for a few months because we have been short on our commission. We were down to four members, the four people who are here right now, uh, uh, plus Sanjay, Sanjay uh, Arwad. Uh, um, and and because of that, because of our, our delay in getting somebody in, we have not met in a few weeks, in a few months. Um, the first item of business is I want to again put forward to the to the commission here that uh, there is some interest in trying to find a chair. We operated for a year uh, with without a chair. Uh, we operated with a year. Essentially, I have done most of the work in terms of organizing the commission meetings and making making the you know putting forward the agenda and trying to line up uh, our speakers and what have you uh, i have been encouraged by uh, uh, members of of the uh, uh of town hall essentially I've been i've been encouraged to try and get somebody to become a chair as a as a face and a name for the commission and a representative that people can talk to. I don't, I can work with the, with the chair if necessary to try and find, uh, you know, if, if I need to continue doing what I'm doing, then I can do that. But we do, uh, you know, I, I can't force anybody to do it, but I would like to be able to encourage somebody to uh, assume the role of chair. Um, I think that, and uh, it's, it's relatively low in terms of its, of its responsibilities, um, especially if I'm working with them to manage the, the agenda in the meetings. Uh, if somebody wanted to take over that piece of it, I would definitely not uh, stand in the way. Uh, uh, we can go with meetings the way we've been doing it, but I do want to try and encourage somebody to uh, step into that role. Um, uh, when people are looking for a, the voice of the commission, I would rather it not be me relaying that this is what the commission is thinking. I would rather have it be somebody from the commission that can speak for the commission. Um, and so are there any questions about what I'm asking in that? And uh, 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 are there any questions about what I'm asking for in that? Are there any volunteers right away? I can still have that conversation. If anybody might be interested in it, please let me know. Um, the one person who I will absolutely not ask to do it would be Matt Cain for, <laughs> for a few reasons. Um, none of them are about uh, capacity. Um, uh, I also want to say with Matt's new position, I'll, I'll, he's going to be the first person that sort, of, that sort of speaks to us this evening uh, when I get done with the intro stuff. Uh, but uh, Matt has volunteered graciously to be our representative for CPAC. Um, that was, uh, that's, that's a really good get for us. And I hope it's not overwhelming. I don't think it's overwhelming. Andy McDougall, who we're about to introduce in a moment, has a bunch of experience. And Andy, are you still working on CPAC as a representative? So we have two people who are essentially voices on CPAC uh, in the commission here. Uh, CPAC is a lot of nerd fun. It's a lot of it's a lot of looking at review. You get a chance to basically shop with a purpose for the town, and so we have two people who are involved in that process on our commission, and uh, I think that gives us a, a, a clearly advantageous position in terms of in terms of having our voice heard on that on that uh, that group. If there's consensus here, then then they will certainly. They will certainly be able to carry that consensus into CPAC. Um, Matt's responsibility has been, he has volunteered also, I want to say responsibility, he has volunteered to keep minutes. Uh, I would love it if Matt continues to keep minutes, but I suppose I should start the, this new year off by asking Matt if he's okay with doing the minutes again. Yeah, I can keep doing the minutes, that's okay. Matt, I appreciate you. Um, uh, do I do I need to? I mean, it's not a it's not a term, but do I need to move? Do I need to hear a motion for Matt to take minutes to continue taking minutes? 
um, Sarah was always my <laughs> my my, uh, uh, my expert on when I need to take a motion when I don't. Um, okay, I'll move that Matt continue to take minutes. Now it's official. <laughs> I'll second that. Uh, it was a long time ago. I'm going to skip by the approval of the April minutes uh, uh, to, to review. There, were, there was, I have minutes for June, I think. June. Oh, I'm sorry. I probably didn't adjust that. Minutes for June. Uh, June minutes. Uh, are there any, I can ask, are there any objections or any corrections or conversations we had about June minutes? I know it's been a while and I didn't review it <laughs> this past week. <clears throat> okay, then really quickly, since we're a little bit, oh, not that far behind schedule. Uh, Do we need to uh, vote to approve the minutes oh, I'm sorry. in June? Yes, uh, all in favor of, of uh, uh, forwarding the minutes as, as is. Uh, so moved. All who oppose? Okay. Uh, I guess for clarity, I'll change mine to an, an abstention. Um, and do, like, how, how close we're not we? we're not recording votes. I don't are, record. Okay, votes. so that uh, that's what I was going to ask. I, I actually didn't even get a chance to see the minutes, and I don't know how uh, you, you haven't have received them. Board is like Robert's rules to a T, which which. You know, I, it seems like this may be a little bit. I need to learn a little bit, <laughs> just just you so know you know. <laughs> you're coming over here, and it's and it's uh, it's gonna be wild. You're gonna come down here and say, "Whoa, this is how the other world lived." <laughs> um, um, uh, and so we will submit the June minutes. We'll submit the minutes for the June meeting uh, to town <laughs> records and and. Uh, uh, what we usually do, Matt keeps the minutes and then he shares them with the commission for us to be able to review in time for the next meeting. Um, and so the last thing I need to do in the intro section is an actual introduction. Uh, uh, Andy McDougall has come to, he's our newest member, uh, the fifth member of our rec commission. We still have two spaces open. We are in the process of finalizing one of them, uh, but but uh, Andy came to us. I did. Uh, I, I I've uh, worked with Andy and his work in youth lacrosse in my one year here, which I think he does a fine job with. Uh, I I did introduce to him the idea of working, and thankfully he looked into it and and uh, uh, and and accepted the, the, the offer to apply and, and uh, had a nice sit down interview and, and uh, we made, the, uh, we made that, that appointment. Um, Andy, would you like to share anything about your background or interests? Um, yeah, sure. Um, so Yusuf and Matt, I've known for years. Um, so I don't need to like go into too much detail, but um, I will say just for the benefit of the, you know, the board and attendees that, um, yeah, as Ray mentioned, uh, my involvement in in recreation in Amherst for the last decade or so has been pretty heavily focused on on growing the sport of lacrosse. So I've been the president of Amherst Youth Lacrosse. Uh, I I coach the Mini Mites. Um, just in the last year, as Ray mentioned, we've you know the our organization has offloaded that kind of operations to Ray, which has been great to to let sort of the professionals run that. So super happy about it. Um, I'm also the high school uh, girls lacrosse uh, coach too, so continue to stay involved in that front. And then in terms of other, um, you know, town activities, I'm on the planning board and on CPAC as well. Um, and yeah, three kids, married, two, well, one dog, one dog unfortunately just passed away, but um, you know, happy to happy to be part of the team here, be the that fifth wheel until you get the sixth wheel. <laughs> well, welcome. We appreciate your being here. Um, moving into today's agenda, uh, uh, the first item we do have, I briefly introduced Maria just to make sure that we had, uh, we had people uh, that, that I knew that people were in, um, but we do have two uh, proposals that are on the table that have uh, particular uh, uh, 
rec involvement that we are particularly involved in that have been identified as recreational proposals. Uh, I have spoken with both of the of the groups directly. I'm essentially a co-author in the second one, uh, but but I did want to extend the opportunity because of the schedule here for CPAC to, to come forward. Before I do, I would like to, uh, uh, Matt or even Andy, would you all like to share with us what the schedule is for CPAC and what, what we're looking at here uh, in the next month or so? Um, do you want to go ahead, Matt, or? Uh, I can do it. I am just going to read the document that I've received from Sam. So it seems like uh, uh, Sam McLeod, who's the chairman of the CPAC, is, uh, has everything pretty under control. And I've received a whole bunch of um, documents, which I haven't let yet had a chance to really review. But um, the proposals uh, have been all submitted at the end of September. And um, I received uh, like a week or so ago, um a big dossier of all of the proposals and uh i'm supposed to review those or with the committee is supposed to, and staff are supposed to review those over the month of october and uh, submit some questions um and then in november um we start to have presentations from the um the people who submitted the proposals and uh review them and um in December, we vote, discuss and vote on the uh, recommendations. Andy, add anything? Uh, uh, the only thing, the only thing that I would add uh, that I noticed, so this is my third year on, is that in years past, I would say that the the amount of money we've had to offer has been in the one and a half to two million dollar range, um, roughly. Is that you know, and that's that's kind of again what we get. There's some sort of games we can play in terms of how we might be able to get a little bit more money but um you know it's in that range and typically i would say we have about a dozen uh, applicants and the total ask is not much more than than that that we have so for the two years i've been on i i, I won't say it's a rubber stamp but just about everything has been approved this year looks like it's pretty different i mean i i just started to go through and, and Matt, if you hadn't looked, it's, it's not one big dossier, it's two big dossiers. It's 230 pages. Um, and, and some of those are, I would say like in total, it looks like we're in the five, $6 million range. So um, unlike years past, we'll have to say no to stuff this year. Um, and I mean, that's that certainly is a, a daunting responsibility for the committee to, uh, to, to be able to looking at, they, they have a number of, of valuable and well thought out, well researched proposals that they're gonna be looking at. They're gonna to have to say no to some. Um, I invited the two particular ones that I know of uh, that are recreation based to speak here. And because I see so many people in our, uh, in our attendee room, um, I'm assuming that this is overlapping with this. Most of them are probably here to hear or see these proposals. So maybe with the proposing group that's going first. I will, uh, uh, I guess, without any further delay, I will uh, unmute Maria. Uh, and Maria, I know that Tony and Rudy are here. I assume that I'm. I'm I should. Uh, allow them to talk also is there anybody else that you would like to have talk uh no that, those are the only folks um to to speak to this uh we do have a powerpoint presentation and so i think i might need to be admitted as uh, if we could be admitted as attendees uh, otherwise i can't share screen okay i will do that because i know how you can kick us back out after we're done okay not a problem <laughs> uh, promote the panelist uh, promote to panelist. Promote to panelist for two and three. So uh, now we have as temporary panelists, we have Maria Kopecki, 
Reed Perkins, Tony Cunningham, um, who were all with the Fort River project that was highlighted in the agenda. Um, I am going to, I assume, share, uh, no, I don't share screen. I need to allow you to share screen. Yeah, I can try. Uh, let me, let me, let me, let me see. Okay. Oh, uh, it's disabled, it says. So I, I think- just I... Try it again. I just, I just okay. made all panelists share. Go. That should do it. Fantastic. Okay. Um, when I go to slideshow, there is a chance that I will lose visual contact with you. So please um, interrupt um, if, uh, if, if you guys have any questions. So <clears throat> let us let us do this. I can still see you. Fantastic. So thank you very much, um, Ray and the, the commission for, for having us here. Um, this uh, to just to get you oriented this is a nice picture uh, a little google earth of uh fort river site um and you can see the the current state of affairs um with the fields um so rudy and tony and i uh, submitted this application to help to offset some of the costs that are going to be involved in uh, what, what will be required for the athletic fields portion of this project so let's get to it so why improve these fields at Fort River? Well, first of all, there's, um, this is a unique opportunity. We are uh, as part, this is part of an elementary school building project. And as part of that project, the grounds, the site of the, the uh, of the Fort River site uh, school, which has been chosen to, to be the location of the school, needs to be improved. And that includes drainage, that includes raising up the, the fields by one foot. So um, a lot of improvements are going to be happening um, to these fields uh, as part of the project. Um, we Many of us have either played or had our kids play uh, on these fields, and we know that the fields um, uh, have drainage issues. They're wet, they're muddy, they're damaged, um, and they, uh, uh, um, I can speak from having a concussion playing there myself, um, that they need some help. There are a lot of organizations um, that that use these fields, and we spoke. We we reached out to the ones that we knew about uh, that are currently using it, from ultimate and soccer and softball and uh, football and cheer. And there's at least a thousand regular participants uh, as part of actual organizations. Not to to mention all the people that use it all the time on a on a more casual basis. So very well loved. Uh, and used field. The um, open space and recreation plan that was recently up, well, not so recent anymore, but updated in 2017, speaks directly toward the Fort River fields as being an important, um, an important site to update and, uh, and improve. So we're in alignment there. Uh, this uh, plan also points out that the, the area of um, that Southeast Street area and East, um, uh, what is it called? the East Village Center, uh, is an environmental justice neighborhood. Um, and there are actually um, plans that I'm sure Andy knows about from being on the planning board that there are there are going to be additional developments there for um, uh, affordable housing with uh, multi-bedroom um, units. So hopefully more kids moving into the area as well. And as these fields improve, uh, they'll be some of the best fields that we have in town. And I'm anticipating, we're thinking that there's going to be more sports and recreational programming once they are improved that are going to want to be using these fields. Um, in addition, the, the site has a comfort station and there's field lighting for the, um, uh, primarily for the, the larger softball field. Uh, and in speaking with the folks that are using it, these are actually very well, uh, highly valued um, and used, especially because there's a lot of little kids that are coming directly from school and so on, and they need to get changed and they need to use the bathroom before they uh, head out onto the fields. Um, the comfort station and field lighting are not part of the school building project because uh, at, rightly so, the school building project is focusing on school uses. So uh, that is not part of their planning at this point. So we asked for it in this CPA application. So why CPA? Um, the MSBA, which is the state granting authority, uh, puts a cap on site costs at 8% of the total direct cost uh, for any, any and all site work. And most projects go well above that. 
for this project, um, about $7 million worth of site work is not eligible for reimbursement from the state. And what that means for us is that that will be entirely borne by the town. So that's going to be town money that's going to be paying for a lot of the site work. Um, again, in line with the OSRP, uh, it, uh, the, uh, this document specifically calls out that uh, CPA funds should be used to improve heavily used field facilities at Fort River. Um, it is, as this is going to be used for recreation, both passive and, um, and active and sports, um, it's, it's right up the alley of the CPA recreation category. Um, and the reason that we're coming to, uh, to you and go then going to the CPA is that if we can offset that cost uh, uh, to the town, what it means is actually giving, it's, it goes directly to taxpayers because the anticipation is that this school project will be paid for with uh, using a debt exclusion override. So anything we can do to decrease the total amount that, uh, uh, that has to go out to taxpayers uh, is a benefit and uh, obviously tied in there, hopefully improving the chances of a successful override vote, which is going to be occurring in May uh, of next year. So we just wanted to show you a little bit about the site plan. So this is what is currently in existence. And you can see there's uh, multi-use fields the, uh, that are used for soccer and ultimate. Um, and there are currently three softball fields. This is the main one with the lights in, uh, uh, at this field. This field is also used by uh, the football, the uh, Belchertown Amherst Granby uh, youth football and cheer. Uh, use this air, uh, field at night because of the lights. The comfort station is here. Um, and what I'll show you next is a possible future. And so this this comes from some diagrams, uh, the, the latest diagrams that the building committee um, is using for the uh, the background to it. And what I've done is to overlay what this could possibly look at. Now, this is very conceptual. This is not the final plan. They are in schematic design, still thinking about all of these things. But the, uh, you can see that in this, uh, the school is going to be in the south part, um, right on top of that comfort station and down here. Um, and uh, there's going to be fields definitely to the north. There's some discussion about uh, whether fields are consolidated or not. The consensus of the, the users so far is that uh, the consolidated gives a lot more options. And you can see here's four ultimate fields lined up next to each other with room in between them. Um, and uh, on the, the right, you can see that two softball fields can fit. Uh, a third softball field is not going to be able to fit on the site. I don't, I, nobody's talking about that. I don't think it's uh, likely or possible. Um, and this other future use, uh, I've got in a little white box here where a comfort station might be. Uh, if the fields are all up north, people can park up here. Um, and not have to schlep equipment too, too far. Um, but that comfort station maybe could go in this area. This is our thoughts, conceptual. Um, and then uh, there could be field lighting uh, around the softball uh, or, uh, and, uh, and other fields because the other, the other sports might want to use these at night as well. Um, so the budget for this, this the, the amounts that we uh, put in our request came directly from the two professional cost estimators that did work in June before these documents were submitted to the Massachusetts School Building Authority. Um, and what we did was uh, we took an average of, of the two values um, and they specifically list out. And if you guys want, I've got tons of detail on this. I can point you directly to the page and this multi hundred uh, page report. Um, but it's for the drainage, it's for the topsoil, it's for the seating, um, and it is for, uh, for softball, you need a backstop and, and a foul, foul poles and benches and that sort of thing. So that, this $2.4 million is the approximate cost of the athletic fields. Um, and that includes um, uh, the soft costs. And so this, this is not a direct cost, this is a total project cost. What we looked for for the field lighting comfort stations, since they aren't part of the MSBA uh, 
project at this point. Um, we For the field lighting, we look towards the Weston and Sampson report from 2022, I believe it was, uh, for lighting for one field. Um, and had to make had to make an assumption that you know it, would this be uh, comparable and, we, and it feels like it like it is um, that would need to be confirmed um, for the comfort station there was a comfort station planned for Kiwanis Park uh, and this was in the JCPC budget of uh, uh, 2022 but it was uh, uh, priced out to the uh, anticipated. Uh, building in 2023. So we used that cost to um, put an ADA accessible comfort station. And that's how we got to our approximately $3 million price tag. Um, I want to stop it because I don't want to take up all the time with the presentation. But uh, please, uh, are there questions that that we can answer? I've got additional slides if you uh, that I might be able to show you something if you wanted. I have two questions. This is Matt speaking. Firstly, um, what what are all the other site costs? So you said, I guess that that this wasn't able to be included in the site cost because I guess wh why is the site cost so big? Uh, Rudy, you might be able to speak uh, well to this, um, uh, but the site costs are literally everything that happens on the site aside from the building so all the paving work you know um uh, the any um what the, the utility work and all the stuff that's outside of the you know quote four walls of the building um is is for site is included it's it's, it's 11 million dollars worth um it includes the playgrounds and that rubbery surface um place any asphalt and uh, the, the grass area that's outside of what they've deemed athletic fields. So grasses that will be used for school play, gardens, anything like that. So, it's a I, huge site. <laughs> I am confused about that. I'm wondering if um, there's no overlap between the school project and this recreation project, or could there be some? Is there some? No. There actually is, um, and um, it's it really is integral to the project because the entire site needs to have the drainage improved um, in order for it to work as a site for a school. So much of the work must be done uh, as part of it. But what we've done is to tease out the parts of the the site work which um, which could be used for community and recreational use. Right, so this is, it's none of the kids' playground areas, it's none of the driveways, it's literally the fields where sports would occur. They're also planning on uh, putting a trail around the outside of it. So, I mean, it can't, it, it, it is available, these athletic fields, to use by the kids as well, and, you know, and the school community, but it's, it, it is, um, uh, it's, I mean, it, when you, let me see if I can, if I can go, oh, let me, uh, let me just escape back out here too. Um, I think basically what you're saying is this project has a lot of site costs because they have to take down the old school. It's a very large site. It's a um, they're, re they're reconfiguring a lot of things at the site. So um, the, the total amount of site costs is more than usual. Um, it's uh it, because of the size of the site, yeah. It, uh, when you talk to the the folks that, that do the the school building projects, they say it, nobody stays below the eight, that eight percent um, cap. Every project goes over. Okay. Everybody, every every project in the in the Commonwealth is going to okay. have to take that burden on. But because this is um, a very large site. Uh, and actually, the, okay. uh, when before they chose the Fort River site, they estimated uh, Wildwood also. And Wildwood had many, many millions in site work too, even though it didn't have any recreational community fields. So the difference at, at, at one point was $2 million between site work for Wildwood and site work for Fort River. And the way the architects explained that was many, many acres of athletic fields. Okay. So my second question, which is not... 100% just about this project, but just in general, um, is is this is is CPA funding the typical way that um, athletic fields are going to get funded? Like, 
in my experience, um, Amherst has a lot of recreational fields that haven't really been maintained over time because uh, we're seeing this at the high school project. We have CPA requests at um, Plumbrook, um, you know, uh, is that is that is CPA really the only mechanism for um, capital at the like projects for, for recreation fields? I can take that one. So there's the Joint Capital Planning Committee, Matt, uh, which is a um, couple of people from the schools, a couple of people from the library and some people from the town. And they get all the non-personnel requests, like all the capital requests, which is buildings, it's vehicles, but it's also grounds. So a lot of the funding could also go through the JCPC um, process, which is like they take a portion of the property tax revenue, their, their target is 10% of the property tax revenue, they set it aside for capital for assets and 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 maintenance and and grounds is in there. So things like that uh, Kiwanis comfort station, we got that number from the JCPC plan from a couple of years ago. And they put in um things like irrigation in there and various maintenance projects. But what happens is unlike CPA where Andy mentioned rightly that often the requests are either below the available funding JCPC is different. JCPC, the requests far exceed the available funding every year. So routinely things get pushed off. So when it comes to making decisions, they're like, okay, well, we can afford to do these projects, but everything else is going to be pushed out to another year. And unfortunately, that happens to the recreational areas frequently. Um, have, they funded, have they funded anything in the recreational areas? Yes. Yes, um, I'm trying. I don't have anything off the top of my head, but there's usually a bunch of stuff in there for parks and recreation and conservation and vehicles, okay. mowers, um, you know, machinery, snow plows. Yes. I, I just wanted to clarify, Tony. So in years past, um, we had like a little bit more, but we were able to say yes to just about everything. And this is the year that we're going to have to say no. And, and so a question I would have is knowing that CPAC is actually before I ask my question, Matt, I would also just say, I think we'll absolutely see recreational stuff going through CPAC because that's one of the purposes of CPAC is to help fund recreational needs. Um, I know that we were hearing kind of anecdotally that across the region, uh, you know, you would see a lot of uh, requests gearing towards improving athletic fields. Um, the question I had is knowing that we're going to have to say no to a lot. You've got 3 million in here, right? Which is more than, than we've given in any of the years I've been on in total. And this is going up against, you know, other projects which affect, um, you know, historic preservation and, and providing access to housing, things like that. We're coming off of this big ask to try to improve the high school fields. Um, the track is, you know, how would we, I guess is the is is the number. I guess is the number like you'll take whatever you could get, right? Like, is anything's going to help, or are you are you in a position where you'd want to make a case why we should pursue this over an affordable housing project, as an example? Well, I think that the the. the... The thing that's unique about this is that it is going to be coming out for a debt exclusion override and um, a lot if you if you listen to all the the, the finance committee meetings and, and so on. Many, many things hinge on that debt exclusion override passing um, many of the other capital projects um, and. The the. The Fort River project, because it, it, it has such gorgeous fields that are so well used, it is a natural tie in to bring people on board to support the school building project and to say, you know what, not only are we going to get a great school for 60% of the elementary, skid, kid, elementary school kid population, um, but we're going to have these much needed and much used fields um, going forward. and the bigger the tent that we could bring in to to help people support this project and in supporting that project support the community recreational fields the better um, the total price tag for the building project 
Um, the, the estimate that was given in June was $100 million. Um, the MSBA funding, the portion of funding has decreased um, as time has gone on. So the town is going to be bearing that and, the ta and it's, a, it's actually directly to the town taxpayers in the form of a debt exclusion override. So in as much as if we can make the best faith effort we can to lower that burden on individual taxpayers and to make people more inclined to vote, to support this project and vote for it. I think that that is, uh, I think it's a strong, um, I think it's a strong argument for, for doing everything we can. And I hope that, that there are other, um, sources that are that are sought. Um, Eversource is going to be um, matching for, uh, not matching, but uh, contributing for the geothermal wells, right? So, and um, there may be uh, I, uh, the Inflation Reduction Act um, uh, monies possibly for solar, you know, so I think that, you know, every bit that we can bring that down is going to help, but the MSBA is not going to give as much as they have in the past. So uh, it's going to be a haul. We'll have, um, more uh, more developed numbers as we reach the end of the schematic design phase, which is where we're at now, and we'll have that in the early part of next year, um, and we'll and we'll know what the MSBA is going to be willing to reimburse before that debt exclusion override. But the reason that we wanted to get this into this um, into this year uh, is because. The, it, the timing is right there, right? I mean, if, if, if we can, if we got it next year, well, that's, that, that's super, but um, people won't know about it uh, next year. So um, I think it, it's, it's trying to support the project as well and get it to pass. Can I just add uh, in answer to Andy's, the part about would you take less? <laughs> um, I think we'd be happy with whatever we can get, but we okay. went in for what we think it's gonna cost. Um, the, as you should, as you should. And, and honestly, I think, you know, as you know, from being on CPAC for the last few years, figures like this aren't out of cash, you know, they're borrowings. So it would be more like if it was a 10 year borrowing, it would be like 300,000 a year plus interest. Um, you know, I don't know if CPAC does more than 10 years. I know for the school, it's going to be 30 years, but, but I think CPAC typically does 10 year borrowings. Yeah, I don't think we've done more than 10 for anything. So so it wouldn't be like wiping out the entire budget for the year. It would be a portion of it. But but yes, I mean, whatever we can get is 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 going to help. And I think it, one one point is um, anyone that's been involved in capital projects knows budget crunches come at some point and there's value engineering efforts done. And then there's talk of what can we cut in order to reduce our budget and this could be one of the things that gets scaled back or reduced. If it feels like it's not essential for the school, they might be like, you know what? We could cut a couple of million off our budget by not doing the fields. And that's a real risk. And, and I know that the superintendent and the two principals that are on the building committee, their vote for Fort River, they said it was contingent on the fields getting fixed. And it is, it is susceptible to getting scaled back and not getting this work done. And I feel like this is a critical opportunity for the town because this project is happening. And a lot of other projects, we'd love to repair Kiwanis, we'd love to repair Groff, all the other fields, but they're not in the pipeline right now. This one's in the pipeline. And so I think getting some money from CPA secures that work. It, it's, it's, it's gonna, if we know there's funding available, then when it comes to value engineering, they're not going to cut something that is already funded. You know, they could cut something else. I mean, you know, who knows what what will end up getting cut? But we see with the library project that struggles they're having right now to scale back things, and and it's likely that that'll happen to the school too. So I think that whatever we can get from CPA is more assurances that these fields will get addressed in this project. Oh, Ray, you're on mute, Rudy. Change it. What what do you see right now as being the architect's responsibility in this that they're they're developing it? Uh, if they if this proposal doesn't go through, is the fear that they'll that they won't have uh, that they won't have a, a priority of of making the fields better? Is your fear that they that that the existing plan doesn't 
Does it know what they want there? What responsibility does that do the, do the architects of the building project have to our goal in recreation? Rudy, you want to take this? Well, I think they're already looking at this. Um, you know, as part of the project, the 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 dimensions of the field and their their placement on the site are still being discussed. So you can imagine that they they could be more expansive or less expansive, more accommodating to the different programs that have dimensional needs for the fields or less, because the the community recreational portion is understandably not. I don't want to say not the top priority, but the school building committee is focused most intently for obvious reasons on the educational program of the school. And to a certain extent, the community recreational use is, um, uh, you know, I, I guess you could say secondary. The great thing here is that there's a synergy possible for the fields because you're doing a lot of drainage structures and uh, partial irrigation, hopefully extensive irrigation, that's already gonna be put in for a lot of the needs for the school. And so those fields to the north, it's sort of, once you're doing that, adding to the, the fields to the north and making sure they're sized the way they need to be to serve the community recreational uses to kind of optimize that, that's already able to capture some synergies in terms of economies of cost because you're putting in stormwater drainage and stuff that will will basically run through the south of the site. So it, it is a really good time to capture, um, you know, recreational uses, I think, because this project is already going on. Are the, is the, is the request for field, uh, uh, is, the, is the request for, for field, uh, 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 for the, for the for the landscaping of the fields is that uh, is that more or less important for you than the than the the lights and the changing station are they do they we're talking about if we have to pull anything back the, the the pieces that I know are not involved in the school project as you pointed out are the lighting and the changing station is that is that a priority, the priority, if that's the only thing that comes from this, is that a success? Are you saying if, if it was only the comfort station, the field lighting? Field lighting. Uh, I, I mean, that it would be, it, it would not serve the needs of really taking a bite out of this yeah. very big, very big ask of of townspeople. I mean, that's going to be that you know what six hundred thousand. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, uh, and if there's if the fields are not developed well and, and we don't have that, I mean, there's there's nothing to light. Um, <laughs> so uh, so uh, yeah, I I mean I I I, I would personally not uh, um, a, a success. Um, yeah. Yeah, and we de definitely heard from other people involved with the ultimate and, and the soccer programs that the, the bathroom particularly is heavily used by all the programs and um, and lighting is a big asset that's not available in a lot of locations. So, um, but I, I agree with Maria that, you know, taking a bite out of the debt exclusion is really important. And the timing of that, the, the other two pieces could conceivably be done later. Um, you know the lighting and the and the bathroom and if they weren't funded i think we would push for trying to set up the subsurface infrastructure so that those could be added at a later date but i think we all know that mobilizing to get the funding for that will will not come next year or the year after if we postpone them it'll be a while before we get back to that so it'd be nice to do at least some portion of the fields and uh, the bathroom and lighting, if we could. I, I had a, do you mind if I jump in with another question? Right, right. Uh, yeah. Um, so I was just looking at the CPAC application earlier and there were actually some more detailed options of lay, field layouts. I don't know if Maria, if you have those handy, cause that was the question I was going to ask in CPAC um, was um, in all of the scenarios, um, 
Yeah, and it might. Do you, do you have that handy that the renderings from the application? Because that that's what CPEC will be responding to. Uh, site plan option C, site plan option B one. Yeah. So they they've actually um, they've they've not landed anywhere yet, and there's actually this is the out the outside everything outside the building is going to be the major topic of conversation of an upcoming school building committee meeting, A, B. B1, C, and D, which are the ones that we had when we had, when we had to submit this. We've kind of moved on from there. We're now, they're now working on E and I'm anticipating that they're, they're gonna be having an E soon to, because they've done some changes for on-site um, uh, traffic. Uh, do I have- I, I guess it's all right if you, if you don't, I mean, I can just describe basically in all those other options you mentioned where you have those ultimate fields, which those, by the way, don't look like they're proportioned properly. If those are, if that's supposed to be four fields, I think an yeah. ultimate field is is a bit wider than that. They're actually they're forty by um, by one hundred and twenty, um, and yeah, so uh, so they they are they are kind of long. So, you know, they've got you know those end zones there, but yeah, they it um, we are hoping to have this big discussion about where how do you position the fields that that hasn't really been discussed yet okay so, and so so the question i had just on all those options that are in the cpac packet that north field is taken up by a softball field which yeah. there's no scale um, bar in here it almost looks like a baseball field and if that's enclosed with a fence yeah so I mean, oh, the first it, thing i was going to say is why you know like that's to yeah. me it seems like it's taking a softball field which is too big for elementary school kids really to yeah to let's play let, on and, taking let, away from the school yeah let me let me mm -hmm. sharing for a moment because i think i can let me let me dig that up i have them too if you want me to share that would be great tony and then um while, while you're doing that um the we did talk to them about it, it, it this this enormous baseball field it's i think it it's like a baseball field yeah yeah it, i think it is a baseball field um and and we've been asking to have this conversation you know so um for a softball field for for women's uh from home plate to the to the outfield 250 to 275 for men 275 to 300 this you know there's co-ed leagues there um and you need you know another 25 feet you know for the backstop this is well more than that um yeah. so this runs a, like um if to, to, i don't know if you can see it but you see the the outline of the the current building yes. and it goes from like the from the the current building down to here and that's this is like 400 feet so that is an over these are not to scale i don't think that this baseball field is to scale so okay. um, yeah it, it's yeah. kind of crazy it, when you go on site it's it, there is a lot of room more than yeah, this yeah. It, 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 it sounds like it sounds like the this the actual plan is not finalized but Perfect. you have you have a rough idea of what it's going to cost but the actual plan has not been decided because the the whole project is still in schematic design exactly and the the what was in the cost estimates were uh cubic yards of material and square feet so i know how many how many how many square feet of um seating right and and so on that they wanted to do uh they were calling for a bit less than um uh, uh, in in that rough estimate from June, then would be then you'd need for four uh, ultimate fields, you need about 200,000 square feet to fit four uh, uh, proper sized ultimate fields with some space in between. So people aren't crashing into each other on mm. the sidelines. So but, um, yeah, but this I, is a this is a proposal for funding. And so and we think it would be applicable no matter the field configurations that were laid out. So we're, we're not yeah. to you all. A, a request yeah, you based it on a, on a certain square feet. That That's right. Exactly. And but I guess the, need, I guess my, the need for lighting in the bathroom would apply no matter how the fields are laid out and exactly how many of each, so. Yeah, I, again, just sort of speak, like if you have updated plans, I would definitely get it over to CPAC prior to our meeting. Because again, I see this and I, all four of them have the same thing, which has like a fence. If the if the field's gonna be enclosed, you've got a fence. So like this, these fields overlaid over that couldn't work because there's a fence in the middle of it, right? So well, like um, just to clarify. Is, yeah, there's I'm sorry, just again to, to yeah. clarify, like so when the committee sees it, they understand that we're not taking Ford Rivers 
playground and turning it into a softball field for the community to use. This is their playground, which we're trying to repurpose. So I think just that might be an, an enhancement to, to bring to the package to make that clear. Yeah. So just to let you know, there is not going to be an outfield fence. Um, most fields in town, there's only one field in town that does have an outfield fence, and that happens to be the one that's currently at Fort River. Yes. Um, but there will be no outfield fence because that would get in the way of everybody else. So there would be a foul pole, um, you know, and markings, but there is not nothing going to be running through those other fields. The other the other sports would be able to use all of that. We did talk um, to the other sports to to, um, to to try to find out, like, you know, well, if there's a, a dirt infield, how, how does that impact you? And if there and and you know, softball is the only thing that's got kind of permanent structures. But if you could have removable bases, then they're they're happier. I mean, they're, they're not it isn't ideal to have to play on part infield, but there's plenty of room that's pure grass. Um, and if you have removable bases, you don't have tripping hazards there. And the backstop would be peripheral, so not in the middle of the field. But yeah, they're still developing these. So please, you know, come join join the meetings and, and uh, we can, you know, they're, they're still thinking about this. And um, Rio, is it the fourth that they're having the big meeting on the site? Uh, so. Yes. So about November 4th at 8.30 a.m. Mm -hmm. The elementary school building project is going to focus the entire meeting on the site plan. And so if I know it's a terrible time for those that have jobs, but... <laughs> You could also watch the recording later, but if you are available at eight thirty on on November fourth, that would be a great meeting to join and and, and share and your that, thoughts. And that will also be addressing outdoor learning spaces and their their bus drop off layouts and and playground spaces. So it won't just be on the playing fields, but that will be a an important component for the discussion. But we can keep uh, CPAC uh, updated. Um, uh, I'll, I'll maybe ask about how, how do I get things to you now, you know, now that we've submitted the application, how do I get additional materials as because this is a work that it, it's literally changing every week so. So just one question that what was the total square foot of fields that you based this on. Uh, they were basing it on uh, and let me pull up my i've got a uh sheet so uh, there were two different cost estimators one cost estimator was uh as uh, calling for about 185,000 square feet the other one was looking at 157 uh to fit four um uh ultimate fields with that room in between it's more like 200,000 so the number that you that is in our application is actually for less than the the total that would be needed, but um, to to fit for ultimate fields. But it's it's okay. what it's what we had. Um, uh, we we used the cost estimators information. We didn't use our, right. our estimates. We used theirs. Okay. So about one hundred eighty. All right. Any more questions? Uh, um, I assume that the commission is okay with us going over time with the questions. I think we were uh, we a, a great opportunity to find out a little bit more about the proposal, to find out where, I, again, I sat down with the three of them to sort of talk about where my interests were and where we overlap with, with our interest for racial planning there it is a weird situation because fort river has always been weird for us um uh, you know what is recreational space what is school space and that's been a that has been an overlap that has been a concern for us for a little while and so what happens with this building project is we do uh we do certainly have to redefine an already uh undefinable in some ways relationship with with uh uh, town and schools, we we do have to try and try and reestablish that relationship there. We lose pieces of it when they talk to me. I I did learn very early on when they did reach out to me to find out what we value in the Fort River layout right now and what we're looking for and what we need in that space that they're renovating. And uh, softball being one of the major ones, uh, we do use it for softball. We do use it for ultimate. 
it is a backup space for soccer and football does have some some use out there also. Um, uh, you know, what we lose in that process is our our main softball field. And so early on, our conversation with the architects was about the space that we're losing in the process. But again, the the uh, the the town is making the decision. The school are are doing a, a project that is their their programming is and should be their number one concern. Um, uh, but in terms of what we have, what we need, what we lose, I think we need to make sure that we're still in that conversation. That we're still trying to maximize the space that we have. I think the point about this being an optimal time is important because we don't want to get caught behind that years from now saying, well, this is what we, what, this is what we lost and we had an opportunity to try and change this. I think the place where this is particularly helpful is because we are, you know, we have a chance right now to make our, our needs uh, known. Um, May I ask a question? Yes, Tony. So what's the Rec Recreation Commission schedule as far as taking votes on recreational CPAC applications? Do you have a timeline for your when when that would come before you? I believe that that, that happens and it may be our next uh, uh, when does I think it's our, our next month's meeting. I don't remember when it was last year. I can look at my notes for, for last year when when we we all reviewed those that affect us and we had a chance to to sort of uh, speak about it at a commission meeting and talk about what our priorities were and talk about where we we were interested uh, if you all would be available to be placed back on call it will be a topic of conversation in uh in uh, november also absolutely it, yeah if the, fourth, uh, if the fourth is that big meeting coming up in november our meeting won't be before the fourth, but if there is a if there is an echo, there's there's a conversation that needs to be had at that point. Then we can we can uh, we can discuss what what we need here. Um, there will be there there will be probably two other me members who are not here right now. At least two other members, two or three other members that will also want to want to be able to ask some questions with this. Uh, we do have the position of advocacy here um, with a voice yeah, in that. We really appreciate you guys having us here and, and allowing us to speak with you. This, this has been great. We're, we're, we're very excited, as you might have noticed, um, uh, about this project. So I can't speak for, I'm, I guess I can speak now, I can't speak for the commission's support. I'm not going to try and speak for the commission's support long term. Uh, the fact that we have a similar interest does not does not guarantee that we'll be pushing for it, um, but it's a conversation that I think is important for us to have as we figure out what we're doing with that with that space. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. I'm going to. Remove? Am I removing? Move us back to attendees. That'd be great. I'm looking for the. Don't, don't kick us completely. <laughs> yeah, Thanks. Promote the panelists, rename or remove. That's all I have here. Oh no, I'm sorry. I got the wrong person. Got it. Bye. See you later. Sorry, I'm learning. Okay, um, that was good. I will, uh, I will definitely table the War Memorial Pool piece. We went a little bit over there, and I'm not the best expert to. I told you I'm the, I am essentially a co-author. Recreation is sort of a co-author in this one. He's not sort of a co-author. I'm a co-author in this uh, with DPW. Um, I will let you know right now. The War Memorial Pool application is basically three parts. One is a to fix a leak in the in War Memorial Pool. A second piece is to replace the liner, which is due for replacement. And the third part, and the and 
I believe the cheapest part of it is to, to commission a study for it to 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 um, to, to recompose the the pool house over there. Um, uh, you know, to, there is some sense that, that we would knock it down and reorient it to the to the uh, uh, to the field side of the pool, um, uh, but but we want to try and commission a study to actually go through the process of moving that pool house or updating the pool house, which is also poorly in need of of an update. Uh, the two that are that are particularly immediate are are the liner and the leak because they affect the immediate functioning for the next season um, involved in the liner. It's a liner and the, and the uh, ADA compliant uh, lift. Uh, the lift is inoperable right now and, and we absolutely need to have that taken care of. Um, and so DPW and myself, uh, we sat down to try and try and figure out how we could, how we could, uh, uh, make that happen without the uh, uh, to, to basically to make that happen uh, without having to shut down any of the services over there. Um, it's one of two incredibly important pools for us as a department, recreation department. Um, I will give, um, we'll be able to prepare a, a presentation in time for November here, but the, the, the concern about War Memorial is that it is uh, bordering on inoperable if we don't get those fixes. And then long-term, this is also that, that perfect time it's been on the uh, Westford and Sampson has been a uh, part of their, part of that study and design was to try and move the, the pool house uh, to, to update and move that pool house. Uh, we are looking at, at, at ways to make that happen sooner than later. And for that purpose, it's probably to commission the study so that we can, we can bring those results. Uh, any questions about that? Again, I will have that information officially for you all as we move forward. That was a, that was a last hour submission. Um, fair enough. Uh, okay. Moving into our uh, our programming pieces, I need to. We got program updates. Uh, I will try and make these as as uh, time honoring as possible, uh, as we are over time. Um, but program reports from the summer. We've been gone for a few months, and. Uh, uh, the first couple things I mentioned there were, I want to just uh, officially and publicly here uh, address a couple of the issues that we had over the summer. Uh, July 4th was in some ways a, a disaster for us in terms of executing a plan. There were things that were outside of our control. There were things that were very much in our control in terms of, in terms of the success of having a, basically Amherst had its first uh, you know, major uh, crowd event since COVID, and for that purpose, I can say it was successful. If it was just a matter of getting people out and getting people out in people's space and celebrating it, it was a success for us. Uh, uh, July Fourth was a was a disaster for us because essentially we we dropped the ball in some of the uh, some of the, the, the follow through and some of the and what we, what we offered was not what we delivered that day. What we advertised was not what we delivered that day. And it was a major concern for everybody who was involved in it. It was a major concern in, in the public. And we have dedicated ourselves towards making, making up for the fact that that was not what we, what we expected of, of recreation programming. Um, again, a good deal of that was out of our control. Uh, we certainly had the, had the ability to address that publicly before people showed up, which is what uh, my staff was was particularly uh, 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 disappointed with ourselves about. Um, uh, but but there was some stuff that was under our that was completely under our control. Also, um, July fourth was will will be we already are in the process of of planning and getting that. 
uh, team together to make it so that that problem doesn't happen again next year. Um, uh, uh, for summer aquatics, this was very much uh, out of our out of our control. Uh, the problem was that we had a major uh, uh, a major equipment failure at War Memorial, and so our we learned about it. Uh, unfortunately, we learned about it pretty much on the eve of the of the opening that we wouldn't be able to open in time, and then supply chain issues and and uh, installment issues. It was basically uh, three plus weeks of of having to do having to take all of our pool aquatics programming over to Mill, which was a a nightmare in terms of managing that, managing our staff, managing our, managing the numbers that were going over there, managing all the programs and opportunities we, we try to do over there. We had to uh, take summer camps and rent the high school pool to be able to run the, the kids up from, from summer camp to the pools. Uh, uh, and so to a, to a probably lesser degree, we owe the Amherst community uh, an apology and our earnest effort to, to atone for that over the course of the next year. And we'll be right on, you know, we're, we're, we'll be on top of that before we reach that eve of the season next year. Uh, but that was almost entirely out of my control and my, my staff's control. But we did lose a great deal of our, our uh, programming. Um, uh, those are two pieces over the summer that happened that had us sort of uh, uh, you know, digging to try and to try and keep ourselves uh, from from losing too much of the esteem that we thought we had built up for the whole year. Uh, it was uh, difficult to maintain through the aquatic situation. It was difficult to to uh, sort of stand up and take the the the. the the, the the disappointment, the the upset community, the people who were noticeably upset about July Fourth after the fact, but we are in a position where I think that we have landed on our feet and, and we can hopefully move forward. Um, uh, summer camps were fine. Summer camps, I can say that summer camps we had a large first summer of relative normalcy. We did have a. a a somewhat normal summer in terms of sports camps, in terms of uh, uh, summer camps at the, at the middle school, summer day camps, we did have some sense of normalcy. And so for that, uh, the summer was, was, I think, a relative success. Questions about anything from the summer? Uh, so, so can you just be exactly a bit more specific about July Fourth? Is yeah. that a lot of people showed up, but hardly any vendors showed up? There is. Is that there it? Is situation, yes. The, uh, uh, the fireworks were fine. Fireworks show. We had a we contracted a fireworks display to come in. What usually happens at July Fourth is there's usually number one a hot air balloon. I'll start with with my favorite ones and the ones that that I was most disappointed about. We have a hot air balloon, which is which is uh, uh, at, uh, the hot air balloon is one of the big attractions. We advertised it, and we lost. Uh, we lost when they couldn't come that day. We 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 lost them as a potential vendor. Part of that is because we got started pretty late, and they were trying to juggle what their what their commitments were. Um, and so we got caught behind that one, but we thought we had them, and then we didn't. We didn't uh, share that with the public before we showed up at the at the July Fourth. And so people came to July Fourth expecting the hot air balloon, didn't see it. Uh, uh, the one that we probably heard the most about was the offerings of of uh, food carnival, food uh, uh, to have to have food trucks and have a large food display. Our vendors, our food vendors, did back out at the at the last minute. Again, uh, it wasn't a holiday plan this year. It wasn't on the holiday because the vendor couldn't, couldn't come out on the holiday. We uh, we so we we chose a date that right before the holiday that we thought would be reasonable, and our food vendors basically left at the last minute because they were waiting and trying to find something else. We did it, 
we didn't have a contract with them, which again, if we start earlier, if my yeah. staff starts you, you earlier. Know, I, don't, I, don't, I don't need the full story. I just need two sentences. That's fine. Beer garden, hot air balloon, food vendors, uh, uh, sort of kid carnival, uh, carnival, carnival events. It was a gathering without a lot to do. Uh, yeah. How's that? That's um, great. Uh, so our 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 responsibility to the community was to deliver like if we would have just said that this is what it's going to be it's a gathering come on out and enjoy each other's company fireworks celebration we got a food truck or two it would have been i would have been happy in a low-key sort of sort of situation yeah yep. that, that's the big issue but you've got it sounds like you've got some you've you've got some takeaways some learnings and maybe you'll be doing things differently moving forward to cover your base is a little bit better. We've already begun that. Yes, uh, that's the that's the important thing at this point. Like, let's learn from it and move on. Um, and that is a segue, I believe, into upcoming projects. Uh, uh, I can table Special Olympics. We haven't gotten a lot of uh, we haven't gotten a lot of traction in that yet. But we have talked about one of the holes in our in our programming is with uh you know, we lost in the pandemic when we lost one of our program directors uh, we lost our special needs programming and one of the first things i looked at early last year was you know these are the places where we don't have programming that answers i did speak at a at a at a conference to some folks that are really interested in extending Special Olympics programming in the area. And so we're doing some, some we're having some conversations about bringing Special Olympics, children, adults, doing, doing a, a sort of a, a full lifespan Special Olympics program that would be competitive, that would be cooperative, that would be with the schools. I've started trying to introduce the idea to the schools and, and I'm hoping to get that moving. Pickleball is uh, now we finally have a little bit of work there. Yes, CPAC last year did approve of the of the of the uh, uh, pickleball courts. We have not picked its forever home. The town and I are working with working to try and find out where the pickleball uh, uh, long term permanent courts will be placed. We've had a series of conversations about that. In the meantime, because it's really important that we get that that we that we honor that that mission of CPAC, the approval of CPAC, and the and the proposal that was put forward last year. One of the things that we did is that we we basically converted one of the two tennis courts at Mill River with temporary lines into the lining for a pickleball court. As the season started to turn right now. We don't have nets out there right now because we don't have the ability to to uh, loan them. They're, they're good nets are frequently portable, and I I, uh, I don't want to spend that money right now on on having somebody go out there and monitor this for for open run. But uh, there are a number of people who have been out there playing already who have portable nets, and it's an access for people to at least see. Uh, to at least have pickleball here in the community. And so it's a process, of course, when we open up in the spring, we intend to have uh, um, um, the, the net situation taken care of where we can offer nets to people who don't have portable nets, but a lot of people in the community do have uh, nets or access to them. Uh, Halloween Spooktacular is coming up. Uh, it is a cooperation with the Senior Center in Bangs. Uh, it's basically a haunted house and a scavenger hunt, uh, trick or treat scavenger hunt on the 30th, on October 30th. Uh, that is, you know, I know that Nikki Belli and our outreach team are really excited about the opportunity to again be in person for Halloween and to be able to have a, 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 a robust uh, holiday plan here. Uh, you know, it's, it's an exciting time because we do have We've already gotten a bunch of sponsorships in for it. We've already gotten a plan to, it's, when I say cooperation, that weekend we're gonna be over there setting up the, the Bang Center for the Haunted House and setting up, it's a, it's a fully orchestrated event that I think 
uh, is a pretty good step towards earning some of the, the credit back that we're looking for in our special events drops of the past few months. Um, 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 Winterfest planning is the last piece that I'll, I'll say, and this was attached to July 4th also. The two biggest community events that we run are Winterfest and July 4th. Um, uh, July 4th, we are all like, that's, that's, that's going to be one that we also do this with, but because Winterfest is coming up quicker, one of the things that we need to be able to do is we need to be able to extend. We lost during the pandemic, we lost sort of the, the breadth of the, of the commission, of the committee planning groups. Um, last year's Winterfest, which again, we had issues with Winterfest last year. And part of that was the Omicron situation, which our commission, we did have a conversation with our commission about things that we would like to do better about that this year. Um, the, uh, particularly about the, about scaling back in the face of Omicron. Uh, the, the, uh, I'm muting. Uh, and the other person knew already. Uh, the Omicron, uh, the Omicron situation hurt us for Winterfest last year. One of the things we want to do is we want to try and extend our committee to involve more than last year was essentially myself and especially, uh, Nikki Belli, my outreach and special events coordinator, and it was the bid the chamber um, that were doing the, the work around trying to set up those, those weeks. I didn't know until the planning started this year for Winterfest, until we started talking about planning for Winterfest, that it wasn't always three weeks, that it wasn't always that. I think that was an accommodation for the plan this year, for this past year. Um, but they do have dates already set, set up for the Luminaria, for, for, the, uh, uh, for the Fire and Ice Festival, which is basically what you might imagine. It's the ice, sculptor, it's the ice sculptures and, uh, and the uh, 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 torch show, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the carnival is going to basically going it, to, it's going to be a, a, a town common celebration of Fire and Ice. Um, uh, I want to, we don't need to have anybody volunteer right now, but I would like to involve our commission. The commission is the first group that I want to reach out to and offer uh, positions in that committee to. I know there are people who have served before and have, and have, you know, have very, very uh, you know, deep interests in making sure that Winterfest happen on our commission. Uh, you know, so I want to try and encourage you all to, to uh, participate with us, to join us for our committees. We'll be talking about planning meetings. Uh, I, I have a meeting set up with Nikki next week to start to prioritize who we want to try and involve in this, who the stakeholders are in Winterfest. If you know people who are, who are interested in being involved, people in the business community, people in, people with, uh, you know, uh, you know, people who are interested from a family perspective, people who, if you know people who would like to be involved in it, you may feel free to send them my way. The Planning for Winterfest, again, is part of our redemption tour, if you will, is part of our, uh, if we're back in now, we, if we're back in it without the, the looming specter of what do we do about break, breakouts? What do we do about uh, you know, rising, rising COVID numbers? What do we do about, uh, you know, can we plan as early as we want to plan? We, we have all that going. We're trying to assume that this is a normal year and we're going about it from this point as a normal year. Uh, and so sooner, not later, we will be, uh, we'll be putting Winterfest in earnest uh, about all of those different smaller activities to go alongside the, the major ones at the beginning and the end, the kickoff and the finish of Winterfest. We want to do this right. We want to do this and, and excite people again and, and uh, give them reason to come and, and participate in our special events as we move through the year. Halloween, Winterfest, July 4th, uh, we're, we're, we've been supporting in other events in the town. We're talking about 
uh, potentially doing some things a little bit different with July 4th. Same idea, there's gonna be a lot of stakeholders involved in our July 4th planning also. Um, questions, comments, feedback on any of that? Do think about, about uh, the, the types of things that you would want to see in Winterfest in particular. Uh, if you're on the committee with me, if you are unavailable but have interest, uh, we are going to be we're going to be asking for your involvement directly in this. Uh, we can do it with the with the select groups that are that have been involved in the past. We can do it. That is in no way our interest. So consider yourself invited. Um, so in, with the, in lieu of any other business, is there any commission business that anybody has to share? Uh, uh, open floor now, uh, 15 minutes late. Open floor now, not that bad. Uh, open floor now for new commission business. Uh, uh, general comments. Uh, we skipped by, and I know there are some people here. I didn't. Oh, we, we didn't discuss any sports programming for the first time ever. Is that because it's all running really smoothly? That is partially because it's running really smoothly. It's partially because it's just sort of getting started now. We are. Uh, I can say that we did. Oh, this is a little bit of an announcement. Uh, we did hire a new aquatics director. Uh, uh, well, we're in the process right now. Of we made the hire. We just have to finalize the, the she hasn't been officially hired yet. Denise Leckenby has been hired as our as our aquatics coordinator. Uh, I'm really excited to have her in. She's she's one of the primary architects in extending our rec swimming program uh, to into the middle school and high school to teach some to, to basically do a competitive swimming program for us. And she also uh, two days before we hired her, the schools also hired her as one of their co-coaches for the, for the high school swim team. And so uh, it is great to have her on her own merits, but it's also great to have her because she is, uh, you know, it, it gives us a, a active connection with the schools that I think, I think make it eliminate some of the, some of the middleman. Um, and I just, I mean, I just think the world of her, I think she's strong. She's, she's uh, thoughtful. She's, great at at uh instructing and managing and she's i think she's a great role model for the people that were both our instructors and our young people that come through our programs uh, because of a hiring crunch we and part of it is is the transition in in our coordinators but because of a hiring crunch we have made the decision to move our first fall session our first fall aquatic session into saturdays to to uh at the same time that we're doing our second session so so that'll come up instead of having an october session and a november session tuesdays and thursdays we're going a we're going with uh tuesdays and thursdays in november and saturdays in november and and so we're not losing any programming that way as soon as she gets aboard, I'll have her introduce Carolyn. I'll have her introducing herself to to members of the of the aquatic community, and I'll make sure I have her. I'll sort of give her your contact because I know that's a particular concern of yours. It's a particular uh, uh, relationship that I want to make sure is is there. Um, uh, and in terms of sports, basketball start about to start soon, and we're going to have we're going to be full board into into the heavy part of the winter when when tryouts start in november <clears throat> that is easily our biggest our our biggest uh, uh, sort of program between now and and you know, spring late spring summer um, the uh, uh other news: the the theater is back up, and so keep your eyes open for the theater. They have, they're already going through rehearsals. They're already getting themselves into into uh, 
uh, costuming and set design and Little Mermaid is coming in January. Uh, their cast has been selected. It's a fantastic cast from what I understand. Uh, and so I, 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 we will be advertising for that more than we've already advertised in the future, but I hope to see you all there. I'll be there every night I can be. <laughs> um, uh, next meeting, obviously will we'll, we'll involve Sanjay in the conversation. Is Monday still a, a ideal day for people? For, Works for me. For Andy's sake, we, we've always met on Mondays. We wanted to make sure we got a meeting in and there were some, there were some conflicts with uh, with as soon as like this weekend uh, for folks we wouldn't have been able to meet in October if we didn't meet today. Uh, that would so, be the seventh, right? So so yes, Monday the seventh. If you want to try and meet the the first Monday in November, I will send that request out to Sanjay also and make sure that that he has that on his radar. Uh, if you all are available on Monday, November 7th, then we can target that as our next date of meeting. That'll be right after the, the CPAC, the November 4th CPAC meeting. So I think that's appropriate. The, wait, all right. Okay, yeah, never mind. It's looking at December. Um, okay, yeah, that seems fine by me. I think the CPAC meeting is, is on November 10th. And seventeenth. Okay. Well, then we in our position. I was going to say the fourth would be a Friday, and I can't imagine that as as uh, as excitingly uh, nerdy as the CPAC might be. I can't imagine that people would want to meet on a Friday night for CPAC. Uh, uh, but if it's a tenth, it looks like this the the schedule for Thursdays. Okay. November tenth, yeah, seventeenth. CPAC is Thursdays, November tenth. Uh, that would put our meeting right before that November 10th meeting, and that could also give me a chance to to get uh, uh, more information here for you on War Memorial. To get them at least to come in and answer questions, us to answer questions. Uh, do answer folks have the, the application too? I mean, I know Matt and I do, but it might be worthwhile for other folks to look through that. What happened last? Last year, and it may be that we could do this better. What happened last year was as we got into the point where they needed some uh, our feedback, I was given copies of all of the all of the applications and I shared that with commission and commission members. I basically asked them to familiarize themselves, a little bit of homework as I think I shared with you, Andy, when we were looking for people to apply for the position. A uh, little bit of homework around CPAC time where we say, review these applications and be versed in it when we come and discuss it as to what our priorities are. Uh, and so if I have access and if we have access to commission, I can look at that to, 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 to sort of point you towards where your access is there so that people who aren't Yusuf and Carolyn aren't on the commission, aren't on the committee. Sanjay's not on the committee. If there's a place where I can just get them in to review these, then, then I can certainly I can certainly do that and point them in that direction. Last year, I just submitted to them. I shared it with them. Okay. Yeah. I mean, there is. I'll, I'll look up see if I can find the link. But the applications are posted online. Uh, I don't know if they're posted yet, but they would be available online for folks to look at. Okay. Um, should I, and I, I still have one, two, I still have two people, three people in our, uh, in our attendees list. I realized as I got to the end here that we kind of grazed past the public comment section. Uh, if there's anybody in the meeting right now that has public comments or concerns, I wanna make sure that they have, it's out of order here. Uh, it's not where it was in the, in the agenda, but I, we want to just make sure that if there are any of the three people who did not have a chance to speak right now are looking to speak, uh, can they message me? Uh, they could raise their hand. If you could raise your hand, if you have a if you have a public comment you would like to make here now. 
I feel I, I feel excited because there there are people involved in our meeting which we don't always have, <laughs> um, and so I forgot about that public comment section. Um, if anybody here would like to comment publicly, please raise your hand. Okay, uh, motion to adjourn. Moved, seconded. Then I will send an official invite when we when I get the confirmation from Sanjay and anybody else that we put on the commission. But we're looking for targeting November seventh as our next date. Very good. Being here, good to see everybody. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you.